Hey everybody, how's it going? Joe's Neon here. Hey listen folks, I've been asked a couple times if I would do some more leather working videos, show a little bit more of my leather working, and um, in particular an axe sheath. So what I would like to do in this video is I want to I wanna take you through the process of how I do a double bit axe sheath. You know, and this this sheath in particular is going to be um, special to me, very special to me. Um, I'm working in collaboration with two incredible gentlemen, um, honestly, and um, I, I, I think that uh, you folks may recognize who these two gentlemen are, and um, I'll tell you a little bit more about how this uh, project came into, uh, came into works. So, let's start with, you all know who this is, right? Bakken, all right? Well, I'm going to find out if you guys know who this is. Okay, if you folks been over to Bucken's channel, you know Logger Al, my buddy Alan. Um, so, this gentleman got a hold of this gentleman that got a hold of this guy, okay? And so here's where we're at. Um, Alan had mentioned um, a sheath for his axe. And um, Buckin uh, basically said, I, I got the man for you. And um, got in contact with me. And I says, Buckin, all I need from you is a pattern. And here's what I need you to do. And he sent me everything I asked of him. So I'm going to just change angles here so that we can move on. I just wanted to get the beginning of the video going that way. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Let me get you down here a little bit closer. Okay. Something's still not tight. Ooh. Okay, so here's what I asked um, Bucking to do is give me a tracing of the, the axe itself hung on the handle and give me a bird's eye view of the, the, the head and the eye, okay? And he, what he sent me is what is in green, okay? Can you see that okay? He did a great job. Check it out. <laughs> Be kind, Uncle Joe. Yeah, smile and a wink. D does that sound like Bucking? Bucking Billy Ray, huh? Open doors he put on there, okay? And and this is exactly what I needed for a pattern. Now, what you see in the black pen lines is what I am going to need to create out of leather, okay? You can see how I've exposed the top of the blade here and the top of the handle a little bit. I want that to show, but I want to cover the bit well I've got my welts drawn in here, okay, and here the face comes over here. This will all be the face of the axe, and my welt is drawn in over here. These black marks here are the black marks that I'm going to need to put my snaps in for my straps. I'm going to do a dual strap. I really like that for the more of a Puget head. Um, I think it's going to look fantastic. This black dot here is center. I'm going to need to know that because we will be putting um, Al's initials in the face of this uh, sheath. So anyhow, folks, from here, what needs to happen, okay, is I've got to cut out the overall size piece of leather that I'm going to need. And I'm going to need two of them. I'm going to need a front and I'm going to need a back, okay? Now, since they're not symmetrical... We'll have to flip the pattern. That's very important. So I'm going to put right here, face, okay? So that I know which is the facing side, all right? Now, what I, what I mean is not symmetrical is that this bit is not going to be the same as this bit. And that's why I've left a little space when I draw out my welt, okay? You can see I don't follow it exact. I leave a little airspace in there so that, especially at the top up here, 
so that that bit's going to be able to clear that welt and get in and out of there, but it's going to fit nice, you know, okay? Now, because this bit is not the same as this bit, just because I've marked center doesn't mean that we can use the pattern for both the front and the back. We're going to trace the face on the leather, and then we're going to flip it over, and we're going to trace the back. Okay? And you'll see that. All right? So what I do at this point here is I go ahead and I, I, I cut this out. All right? Now, what I use is, is I took this, this piece of paper that, that Billy sent to me, and what I do is I, um, I put a little spray adhesive on it, and then I, I stick it down. I stick it down to um, a part of a beer, beer box, okay? Works great. I'm recycling, you see? But it's great, great material for patterns. Now I'm cutting my my fur, furthest lines out. Okay, that's the first in the process. All right. Let me just turn it down just a little bit more here. I'm cutting on the outside of the welt, which is going to be the overall largest parts of the sheath. Okay, now I'm going to come in here, cut the bottom of the mask. I hope you guys can see that okay. Can you see that all right? All right, let's see what we got here. Okay. Now, this is this is very important that I that I have this bird's eye so that I can match proper thicknesses so that the bottom of the welt here is thick enough and so that my straps are long enough that come over the top. But this is what the the welt is going to look like and or the welt, excuse me, the the sheath is going to look like the overall shape and I I love it. I I Okay, now that we got our pattern cut out, what I want to do is I want to use my, um, my punches, okay, my leather punches, and I want to punch where I had marked for my straps, okay, so that when, when I trace the, um, the pattern onto the leather, I'll be able to also mark where I'm going to need to rivet my straps and put my snaps. The top hole will be where it will be riveted, and the bottom hole is where the snaps will take place for the straps. And you'll see that um, in, in, in the design of that sheath. I'll just give you an idea real quick what they look like. This is that type of design. Okay, the two strap over. Okay, I really like that. And I think it's going to look great on this axe. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to grab ourselves a piece of leather. And now, for this project, I've specially ordered some really nice 9-10 um, ounce um, veg tan leather. And just look, look at this beautiful stuff, huh? Just, just look at this stuff. Man, huh? That is some nice stuff there, I'm telling you. So, yeah, now I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work from down here because I wanna use the, the, the best of the best um, when it comes to, comes to this comes to this leather and, and the making of this sheath. I want this to be a very special one for my buddy Alan. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black ballpoint pen and I'm going to draw around this 
pattern here and then I'm going to flip it over and do it draw the other side so that when we put it together we have two finished sides out okay that's what we want here we go here we go folks let's make an axe sheath huh huh this is not difficult this is a lot of fun I have so much fun making these things now I know you can't see at times, but trust me, what I'm doing is I'm just, I am just very carefully tracing this out. Now that's what's important when you use a little bit of a cardboard. If I try to trace around a piece of paper, it's gonna move all over on me. I'm not gonna get an accurate tracing. So now I'll mark my snap holes. And when you see how nice this looks, folks, on the leather, ready for me to cut out. Bam! Okay, now what we do is slide her down. Okay, and we flipped her over. Okay? Very important. Okay? Here we go. This is the back. Now, why am I not worried about black ink on my leather? Well, it's very simple because my edge trimmer is going to take that right off. That will disappear, and you'll see that very shortly when I trim the edges. Okay. Very good. Now, being the back, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. I won't do the front ones, okay? All right, now, now we've got our, our faces, okay? Traced out on the leather. They're ready to be cut. I'm going to move that aside. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to cut the welts, all right? We're going to cut the welts out. So what we'll do here is we will mark this from the face. This will be the right, and this will be the left, from the facing side of the sheath. Now I'll just go ahead and I'll just cut these welts right out. Okay. Okay. There's our right welt. Here comes our left welt. I hope you folks can see what I'm doing okay. All right. And there we go. We got a left welt and a right welt. Now, this can never be used again. The chances of another axe fitting this is slim to none. I would throw this out, but <laughs> be kind, Uncle Joe. Yeah, wink. A uh, 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 smile and a wink he had here and open doors. Yes, indeed. Be kind. <laughs> we love it. We love you, Bucking. All right, cool. So I'm going to hang out of that. This Now, I've got my two welts. Here's what I want to do. I'm not going to use the same leather. I want to step it up a bit. I'm going to grab a hunk of 1012 and I'm going to cut it out of 10-12 um, for the welt so that we got a little bit more beefiness, okay? Now, let's go back to this piece of our pattern here that we needed to save because this is very important, okay? We've got the, the bird's eye of this. We got to make sure that our welt is going to accommodate that blade thickness, and I think that our 10-12 ounce is going to accommodate it perfectly. So let me grab a hunk. Okay, here we got um, here we've got a hunk of 10, 12 ounce, folks. Okay, this is some good heavy leather here. Oh, look at that! We almost got a radius. We almost got a perfect radius on there. Folks are probably a little bit out of the. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. All right, let me just move you right over here. I've got some really nice, nice thick leather here. 
and I just go ahead and I trace the welt out now. Okay, make sure that you make your welts thick enough as far as the width this way goes. Okay, there, I'm going to sand this outer edge to finish it. So I need to I need to um, accommodate for that material to be removed. But I also want my stitching to lay in a good solid foundation right through the welt of the of the of the sheath so that that blade is just tucked in there and it, it ain't getting out it can't go nowhere it can't cut anything it can't cut through anything it doesn't matter how sharp it is it's very important okay now this one is going to get marked with an l for left okay now we'll go ahead and we're going to put in our right See if I can match that radius. Yeah, I can live with that. That'll work nicely. Okay, folks, I'm just drawing around it. Let's see what we got, okay? R is for right. Okay, there's our welts. All right, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut some leather. Okay, now what I've done is I've used my punch to punch my holes for my straps that I'm going to need. Now, um, I just want to bring attention to you real quick here. You see these tight corners like this? Okay, what I like to do is I like to take a um, 3 16 punch, and I like to radius these. You're going to shake. Okay. That makes it a lot easier for me to cut a really nice, clean corner in these. Just two more to do here. It's a lot easier to work the knife around the radius when you've punched it out. You don't have to make a tight cut. And that's where things can get kind of ugly. So let's cut some leather. I want to talk about this beautiful tool here. Bakken, I know you love old stuff. This is a very old leather cutting knife. Um, it was given to me uh, from a very good friend of mine. His father had recently passed away. He liked to do leather work. And he had found this knife in one of his old leather working boxes. I made a sheath for it. Yeah, you can see my initials. But check out this old beauty. Huh? It's got a two-sided cutting edge on it. And it's wonderful steel so I can make it really, really sharp. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut some leather here. All right, now I'm going to come across the top here first. I don't know if you guys can see that. You just want to take your time here with this. We're not rushing anything. Take your time. Make really nice clean cuts and I go back over my cut just to make sure then I'm good to go and I'm absolutely good to go, okay? So what I wanna do now is I wanna cut these radiuses. Don't try to cut these radiuses towards you when it's in this fashion, having to make this turn. What I like to do is I like to take and, I, and turn my piece to make it a little bit more ergonomic for me, make it a little easier for me to cut. Now I'll go ahead and go in. Okay, and we'll get, look, look at, look at what a beautiful, smooth radius this knife gives me. God, it's amazing. Thanks, Chad. Really cool old knife. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do this other side here. Now, that's going to be a little trickier. I'm going to have to move you like this, Okay. Over and I'll come in. Okay. 
Okay. Right around there, perfect radius. Go past your line. Okay, or you're going to get a pull there. And we'll go back and we'll make sure that we got a nice cut. Okay. And there we go. Now we've got two more short cuts to make. Well, actually, we've got we've got a nice long one here. I want to go ahead and make this face cut and these two short cuts um, last. So see, this is where this this punch out here is giving me room to put to drop the tip of my blade in. Look at how nice that cuts that. It's just perfect. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and make these two shortcuts. We should be pretty close to, look at that. Oh, we're a little bit connected up top here. But, jeez. Okay. There you go. That's our back. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece out. And I'll get the welts cut out. And I'll get right back with you. All right, folks. So, we got all of our parts cut out. Okay, we've got our face, we've got our back, and we've got our left and our right welts, and we've got our two straps that we're going to need. Okay, and our old antique leather knife did a beautiful job cutting this leather out just perfectly. Now, our next step is going to be to trim the edges, take them from square and make them a, a, a radius shape instead of being a square shape. Um, but before I do that, what I want to do, no, I think that that's what I want to do next. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim my edges up on what I need to trim, and I'll show you some of that and how that works. This is what a um, an edge trimmer looks like, okay? All right. Now I just take that, and I just run it on my strap. I keep that razor sharp. It's very important that this tool stays very sharp, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have to go all around your facing plates. All right? This edge really doesn't matter because we're going to be we're going to be sanding that, okay? So, here we go. This is going to make a for a really nice burnished edge on this leather. Okay. A little light there. We'll just come right back in and clean that up. You see how nice that looks? Okay. Now we, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do these edges too. Right up to here. Right around. Okay, see that nice bevel we've got on there? All right, we're going to worry about these outer edges after we've got the sheath put together and we sand our welt, then we'll go ahead and radius those edges. But for now, we still want to do this very bit of the inside of the sheath. Because this is where the axe will be going in. We, we want that to be nice and clean. Okay, you see what a beautiful edge that leaves? Now, wait till I burnish it. Oh, oh, you'll love it. You'll just love it. Okay, now we're going to come back up through the bottom here. This is the bottom of the, the face of the sheath. Okay, now the face plate has been trimmed. Okay, here's our trimmings. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that to the back plate and our two straps and then we're going to start to moisten some leather and we're going to start to do some scribe work before we tool it because this sheath will be an entirely tooled um, uh, sheath which is going to be a lot of fun and I hope you folks are, are enjoying the journey so far. I'll be back with you in a little bit.
Now what I'm getting ready to do here is I've got <clears throat> I've got a tub of room temperature water here and I'm going to start to moisten the leather because what I want to do is start to lay some border lines in it. Some decorative border lines, border lines on the straps, also border lines on the face and back that are going to show me and give me a guideline of where my tooling is going to go. So let's start to moisten this leather and, and you, you, you can just see right away how this beautiful veg tan oak leaf sides just are so willing to take that moisture. Now don't rush this process. Take your time so that you can get nice, nice, nice scribing in your leather. And that's basically what we're doing at this point is we're scribing, we're going to scribe our border lines. That's going to give us the area in which we want to work in. And it's going to also give us a really nice decorative finish at the end. And you'll see that. Now, we're wetting all of these um, not, I don't want to say wetting. We're dampening all of these pieces together, but we'll have to go back and, and dampen them as we go. Okay? So, now, let's start with the face, and that's going to decide... First, we'll start with our narrowest scribe that we want to do. And this is a, um, a, guy, a gauged scribe. And what I'll do is I'll set that for where I want my narrowest line to go on the outside of my decorative scribing. And that will be this. This will also work nicely on the straps. Okay? So here we go. I'm going to drop you down so that you can see this much better. Okay? How's that? Can you see that okay? Now we're just going to go nice and easy. And we're going to go right around the edge. Look at that. Beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> you haven't seen nothing yet. I tell you. Good stuff, folks. Good stuff. Now, I'm just going to go back over it one more time lately. And see to it that I got a good impression. And I sure did. Look at how nice that impression is okay can you see that now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing down here and we need to be really careful when we turn these corners that 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 scribe doesn't skip out on us okay very important because if it does you will never get that mark out of the leather from it skipping so it definitely takes practice. All right, now I'm really happy with that for a first mark on this piece. Let's see if this leather is still ready to accept or do we have to... Um, nope, she's perfect. Okay. Now we're going to come right around here and do the same thing on the back panel. Okay. This will all start to make a lot more sense as, as the project moves on here. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to go over this lightly again, just to make sure, like I said, that I got a really nice, really nice imprint. And I do. Beautiful. This is just absolutely beautiful. The way that came out. Okay. That's wonderful. Now, we're going to lay those aside. We're going to have to moisten them again, just like our straps here. These are going to need to be moistened before we can uh, go ahead and describe them. Just slightly. And we'll let them set for a minute. These, we don't want to let them get too dry. So we're just going to go ahead and give our front and back plates just 
just just to keep them so they don't dry out I have a light over the top of me so that I hopefully get this video is coming through good and it, it's really drying the leather out quite rapidly to be honest with you a little too fast but that's okay I'll set those aside and these are just about ready to go here okay don't rush this process don't rush this process okay you, you don't want your leather to be wet you don't want to see water on it okay that's that that would be saturated you just want to wait until it starts to turn back to the lighter color you see now we're ready to scribe okay let's come right down these straps look at that and that's going to hide right underneath the snap and the rivet okay actually this will be the rivet side so we're just going to come around very carefully and make this turn okay Okay, there's one of our straps. Okay, here we go with the other one. All right. And our straps are all set to go. We're going to go back now to our face plates and we are going to open our guide up a little bit further. Oop, come on now, buddy. Just a little bit further to give us a really neat, a beautiful double outline. I think these are ready to go. Let's give it a try. Okay, here we go with a double outline. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is really, really nice. Yeah. We'll go over it once again. Make sure we got a really nice... I hope you folks can see this okay. See, now we've got a beautiful, beautiful double line. And we'll do that all the way around the um, front and back of this, of this beautiful, beautiful sheath. Okay, let's do that again. Make sure we got a nice... Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, you haven't seen nothing yet, it's like I just told you. Okay, now I'm not too concerned. Well, I was going to say I'm not too concerned if they dry out at this point, but I am because I need to set my, my stitch line. I want to show you folks that. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and lay the double line in here on this one. Okay, we'll go over it one more time. All right, I think you folks have seen enough of this process here. So um, I'm going to finish. Well, no, I won't. I want to keep showing you this because I want to show you how I decide where I'm going to put the stitch line for my welts. Okay, these are really looking sweet. I love it. Okay, there's our faceplate. All right, now I'm just going to dampen the edges here of the faceplate and the back plate so that I can show you how I will lay in my stitch line. Okay, grab one of my welts. 
and I'll just take my I'll just take my tool here and I'll find just about center. Now I'm going to be sanding this a little bit, so I want it to be a little bit further than that. Okay, so here we go. I think that's going to be perfect right there. Whoa, not right there. I think that that's a little bit too wide. A little too wide. Okay. I need to go a little bit closer than that. Take your time on these steps. These these steps are critical here. Okay. I'm right where I want to be with my stitching. Okay, you see that? Can you see that? On my welt. That's where I want my stitches to lie. Okay, because some of this outside material is going to be coming off. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to shallow it up just a hair. Just a hair. That's it. That's where I want to be, right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay in our stitching welts. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to start up here because I'm going to be putting a rivet in. So I'll come in. I said stitching welts. This is going to be our stitching guideline. And right back here to where another rivet's going to be. And old Al, buddy, I, th I say, uh, I think we're going to go fancy on this one. I think we're going to do this one in all brass hardware, buddy. What do you think? Do you like brass? Huh? Yeah, yeah, I do, and I think they look gorgeous in brass. So here we go, around the other bit here, and right up. Let's go over that again. Okay. Now we need to do the other side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double this up, just like this here. This is going to have another border to, to match this double line. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to lay the bricks in. This is going to be completely done in basket weave, which is a very, very beautiful, beautiful um, uh, leather, leather texture, as, as many of you know. Um, let me show you. Okay. That's your basket weave. And, and this is what our, our buddy Al... Al, oh Al, love you buddy, you're, you're, you're getting this beautiful, beautiful basket weave. But you see I got a double line here, and I only have, uh, well I've got my stitch line that I just showed you, and then I've got this other border line. I'm going to lay that in now, and um, we're going to keep rolling on this folks. I hope you're enjoying the project, and I'll get back with you in a little bit. Okay, I've got the border lines all scribed in. Now what I'm getting ready to do is a, is a special part of this video for me. Okay, I'm getting ready to put uh, Big Al's initials. We're putting Al's initials in this one. Yes, we are. This is, this is, uh, this is, this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful custom sheath. That I was gonna have okay now I clip down this this um, straight edge here so that um, I, I can stay right on right on level it's it's kind of tough to get these letters perfect okay now we're gonna start with um, the K okay which is which is Al's middle initial and we're gonna set that up properly properly I got to line up here, okay. Okay, we got a really nice stamp on the K, that's for sure. All right, now we have the D. 
We're going to go ahead and line that up properly. We got a really nice stamp out of the D. And now we want to give the big Al his A. Well, I'd have to say, I'd have to say that's some nice initials there. Okay, can you see those okay? Stamped really nice. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to pop these back in their cases so that I don't lose my, I don't lose my letters. Okay, now what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and find center on the back, which is going to be just about... Oh, six inches. Make just a little dimple there. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to moisten this again just a little bit. Right in this area because, yep, I got a maker's mark now. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that maker's mark at this point right in here so that when we when we go ahead and do the when we go ahead and do the uh yeah the basket weave and the rest of the tooling we already have these 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 marks established and that's what we want to have okay okay here we go the maker's mark All right, and that comes out really nice. Okay. There we go. Now, what we're going to get into next is the full tooling of these beauties. And that's a long, drawn-out process. But I'm going to take you along with me for, for some of it so that, so that you can get an idea of... Um, how I go ab about doing it. The first thing that's going to have to take place though is I will have to take my steel straight edge and I will have to scribe lines across the face of the sheath so that that will keep me keep my basket weave nice and even. Okay so what I'll be doing is I'll be coming in here basically going right through my two um, snap holes that keeps things nice and even that's a good orientation mark is using your snap holes and I'm just going to go ahead and scribe just a light line okay and that's going to keep everything nice and even for me all right and I'm just going to go below those kind of like my level line to be yeah yeah, there we go. I like this. All right. And like I said, folks, the next step is going to be the basket weave. Okay? So I'll be back with you in a little bit. Thanks for hanging around. What I've done here is I've re-moistened the leather and I've prepared it for further stamping. This is the stamp we'll be using, which is a medium basket weave stamp. And it's really interesting how this goes together. For those of you who are not familiar with stamping leather um, or the basket weave, it's really interesting. What I've done is I've put a center line in here. That's going to keep my work um, nice and straight. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll find that center line. Now, now pay attention to this first row because this first row is going to be what is... <laughs> if your first row isn't straight, the rest of your work is just going to get further off from there on out. So, all right. Now, that wasn't deep enough. I'm feeling it out as, as far as how hard I, I'm going to need to stamp. Okay, you see how we're going along here? The leather is is really good as far as the, the amount of moisture for stamping. 
which is important. It's really important. And take your time when you're lining these when you're lining these basket weaves up. Take your time. You know you you want this first row to be nice and even. It's it's just so important. I I can't I can't stress it enough. You know this work is. Um, very time consuming. My buddy uh, Chris Killinger will tell you so. When you're doing, you know, intricate leather work like this, making sheaths like this, you're spending a lot of time. You really are. There's a lot that goes into it. Take your time placing that stamp because once you hit that mallet, there's no going back. You see how beautiful that basket weave is starting to come? Buck, and thank you so much, buddy, for giving me the opportunity to to um, share this with, with our buddy Al. This really means a lot to me. Now, I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to push it to the edge here. I'm going to keep it away from the edge a little bit, and I'll find out how to finish that later. Okay? Now what I want to do is I want to come back here and continue on down the line. Okay? That looks about good right there. Yep. That's beautiful. This is... Uh, this is very enjoying. It's probably driving you folks crazy, me hammering with the camera on the bench, but this is what it takes to, to, to create these beautiful to create these beautiful sheaths. You know? Um, I really do enjoy this work. It keeps your mind young. Because there are steps in the process. And if you, if you don't do things proper in the process, you'll get screwed big time in the long run. And it's not fun. You'll get ready to finish a leather project, you know, that you have 40, 50 hours into it. And right at the end, you'll realize... Oh, no, I was supposed to do that, or I was supposed to do this. Yeah. Believe me, that's learning the hard way. And it's happened to me many, many times. It's expensive, too. Not only for your time, but for the materials. You know? Let me just move that out of the way. Now, I'm almost getting ready to um, the point where I need to re-moisture my leather. See, I'm taking my time to make sure that stamp is placed absolutely perfect. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and make the mark. Okay. This is what we're after. Now here's where it gets really fun, okay? I'm gonna see if I can get a, a a couple more marks here, but this is where this is where it gets really interesting because what happens now is you'll start to understand how it's a basket weave, okay? Okay, here we go, here we go. You see how beautiful it starts to come? That's just, I, I just love that. This here I'm going to try and, um, I'll just give this a, uh, yeah. I'll wait to come back to that. But anyhow, now you get the idea and there's going to be hours of this going on. 
okay stamp by stamp by stamp by stamp we'll create the basket weave we will do the entire side of this and the entire face of this you see how beautifully I bordered L's initials and that's gonna look gorgeous with the basket weave around it okay folks so hang in there. We're moving along on the project. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate your company, and I got a lot more to come. I just got to get through some of the stamping before you get a headache or I get a headache. All right, I'll be back in a bit. Talk to you soon. After a lot of tooling, boy, we've got some beautiful, beautiful pieces here to work with. I just want to show you. Man, oh, man. Okay. Here's the back. All right, maybe we got a little bit of dust on that lens. It's probably been on there for all this time, but oh well. Yeah, okay. So um, let me show you the face, how that came out. All right? You got to remember, each imprint is four strikes of the hammer. There's a lot of time involved in that, you know. Um, okay, so we've got the front and the back. They're all set. What we got to do now is I've dampened the edges. And what we're going to do now is we're going um, to burnish the edges. We're going to put a shine on them. Where we want the leather to be nice and smooth. Okay, I've already softened them, like I said, and we're just going to give them a nice, nice polish. Can you see that? That's burnishing the edges. Boy, they come out just beautiful. If you get that, if you get the moisture content right, man, you'll have just some beautiful burnished edges. This weight lever is working perfect in this groove. Okay, let me show you what we've got now. Okay, you can, can you see how smooth? It's like glass, just perfectly rounded as compared to that. So yeah, I've got uh, <laughs> I've got quite some time here involved in burnishing these edges. So. Uh, I'm going to keep burnishing, and I'll get back to you folks.